Hello and welcome back to the Wellness Check. Today's video is going to be about how EMDR can help with OCD. One of my viewers requested that I do a video on OCD and EMDR and um, fortunately EMDR works really well with OCD. So let's spend just a couple minutes talking about what OCD is um, <clears throat> and how and then we can get into how EMDR can help. So with OCD, there's two components. If you really break down or expand, I guess, on the word OCD or on the acronym OCD, it's Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Um, so the two components are obsessions and compulsions. Someone with OCD, the obsessive part of it is very much in the mindset. It tends to be very ruminating, cyclical thoughts that just go over and over and over and over until we then soothe those thoughts through a behavior, which is called the compulsion. The most, I guess, stereotypical ways that we hear about OCD are with cleanliness or hygiene or organization or hand washing, those types of things. But it's actually way more expansive than that. And truthfully, some of the most common ways that I see OCD in my office is mostly with the thinking patterns. Um, so the obsessive parts of the OCD. And people that tend to have anxiety tend to have OCD on the spectrum. I call it a spectrum of OCD. And it can be from a very um, non-invasive type of cyclical thinking that's just kind of more of an, an annoyance than anything all the way, in, the way into this is life changing for me i can't get through a day um, these thoughts are so compelling and so much on my mind that i can't do anything else effectively or it causes that person to have to jump into the behaviors to self-soothe those anxious thoughts so much that then it's impeding their day as well um, ocd is under the umbrella of anxiety disorders that's why you see that comorbidity there. Um, and there are varying effects of it, like I said. So we tend to start seeing OCD come out around, you can see it in childhood, but we mostly really start to catch on to it in adolescence. And um, again, depending on the severity of the OCD, either we look at therapeutic um, ways of coping and adjusting and being mindful of it, or it's really not harmful and it's not really that impacting and so it's something we just kind of psychoeducate on and and move along with so when it comes to emdr treatment of ocd we're obviously kind of talking about the more severe cases of ocd where it does impact someone's daily life again the way i see it portray itself mostly in my office is lack of sleep when the busyness of the day calms down and it's time for bed. We have what I refer to as a calm body and an active mind. And it's very common for people that are busy and have busy lifestyles to be able to kind of consciously or unconsciously distract themselves from the thoughts or feelings or reactions or overwhelms of the day until they lie down, until things are quiet and still. And then the mind ramps up and says, hey, 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 I've been trying to talk to you all day long. You have not been listening. Listen, you're going to listen right now. We're going to go over and over and over and over all of the things. And some of the thoughts might be as innocuous as something embarrassing that you did in third grade to um, the worries and woes of tomorrow, a presentation, a test, grocery list, um, logistics of the day. It really could be something seemingly that small but that takes over your mind because it just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats and that's when it becomes a problem right if we're losing sleep if we cannot concentrate at work if we're not listening to our teachers and bosses if we are you know biting our nails down to the quick basically <laughs> and just f having all of these anxious behaviors that's when we need to talk about it. So if you know me and you know my style, you know that I'm a very much roots type of therapist. I will talk all day to people about coping skills and how to manage thoughts and feelings. 
but that's not the most important part. The most important part, in my opinion, is getting to the root of how this came to be in the first place. So that's how I look at OCD as well. OCD is here for a reason, and it technically, especially the uh, compulsion part, is a coping skill. It's a way of coping and managing with the anxious thoughts that we have. So if we think about it in terms like that, then EMDR can actually be very helpful for OCD because we're not just looking at coping skills and mindfulness around the patterns of OCD. We're looking at the formation of why it's here, which means we're talking about anxiety, which means we're talking about how one becomes anxious. Um, is it current life stressors and circumstances and life events? Is it older? Are we talking family of origin stuff? Are we talking trauma? What really is underneath it? Let's go back. And when I start talking to my clients about those things, it becomes very apparent why they are suffering from the effects of OCD. Sometimes that awareness in and of itself, connecting to the past and really getting to the foundation and roots of it all can be helpful to alleviate some of the symptoms, but because by nature this disorder is so repetitive, so repetitive, we almost change our neural network to be that way. So it's really hard to get out of that habit and it tends to be very impulsive, right? So EMDR, let's get into it. We know what EMDR is. We've I've talked about it at length in multiple videos. EMDR I come at it in two different ways, depending on the circumstance and the person. I'm either focusing on the here and now, which would be the disturbance of the OCD. It would be the irritation and frustration and confusion around why they're doing what they're doing and thinking what they're thinking. Basically, the experience of OCD as it is. Um, and, and really titrating the treatment of, OC, of EMDR to the experience of that here and now. Or we've kind of gone back with the breadcrumbs and said, okay, this is what has happened. These are the events that have taken place. These were the impacts of these events. Does it feel more relevant to talk about the here and now OCD as it is with anxiety day to day? Or does it feel more relevant to go back to these originating factors? And most of the time, people want to go to the originating factors of whatever it is. Like I said, family of origin, childhood, abuse, neglect, bu being bullied, um, feeling unintelligent in school, whatever the case may be, that's what we target. So when we're doing EMDR, we do the standard protocol with EMDR. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the unfolding of understanding with this client, the client's understanding rather, of how these events have kind of molded themselves into cyclical thinking, um, into the behaviors that come with OCD, the compulsionary part of this. It begins to actually make a lot of sense. And in my opinion, again, half of the healing at least has to do with, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy, right? This, this really is something that is in my control. I see what's happening here. I've never thought about it like that. And again, awareness is the biggest first step to change. We all know that. If we want to change a behavior or change the way we're doing things, we first have to be aware. But to do it from that angle by going way, way, way back and not just focusing on the compulsions and the thoughts themselves is extremely helpful. And it helps to f helps the person to feel that they are human and that they have been impacted by what they have been through. It's a very humanizing thing. Um, lots, lots of compassion around that, actually. Not only therapist to client, but client within themselves. So I, I in the therapist chair, I'm, again, I'm looking for those connections of how did these events impact this person? And how is that person seeking safety and predictability in their lives because of those things through OCD? <laughs> does that kind of make sense? I hope it does. Um, once a person really understands that and begins to develop uh, more healthy or more robust ways of feeling grounded and safe and all of those things, Typically, the need to do that in the OCD-like ways decreases. 
Um, oftentimes also, I will add in, if needed, a little bit of exposure work. So the way that this looks treatment time-wise is we do the background information. Tell me what your OCD is like for you. How does it impact your life? How long has it been here? Then we attach it to the why, the roots and the foundation. We do the EMDR and then we debrief, right? We, we, we leave time after a session or maybe the following session to say, okay, tell me what life was like outside in the, in the real world. What did you notice about the obsessive thoughts? What did you notice about the compulsive behaviors? Did they increase? Did they decrease? Did they stay the same? What do you want to see happen with that now that you have such a, an understanding of why we're here? And we sometimes will do some exposures. And of course, that's done in a very responsible way on a hierarchy list. And we're starting with the lowest activating things all the way up to the highest activating things. And that seems to be the most comprehensive way of treating OCD, of having it be a lifelong change for these individuals. And not only for the behaviors to stop, but for them to walk away feeling like they completely understand how these things happen to have a greater sense of compassion and empathy for themselves and to prevent that from happening again should a life circumstance in the future be problematic or challenging for them so that's it in a nutshell i know i kind of sped through that really quickly um but ocd and emdr work really well together and it's not something that you have to live with for your whole life. And it is something to pay attention to, especially if it is impacting your daily life. And um, to go from a mindset of feeling trapped in your brain and in your body with OCD to a brain and a body that feel free and loose and calm and confident is totally worth the work of EMDR to get there. So don't shy away from it. EMDR and OCD, they complement one another very well. And I, this, this, I guess this is just my encouragement that if you are one of those individuals or if you know someone who has OCD symptomology, tendencies, or whatever that might look like, have them go to an EMDR therapist. Uh, it's very likely they won't regret it and that they'll leave the office feeling much better by the end of it all. Okay, as always, thank you for checking in with your wellness. I'll see you soon.